Good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Wednesday the 21st of April. I do hope you're well. As always, we use the form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam in his book, The Rhythm of Life. We'll use one of the reflections um, based on one of the Bible readings for today. And on a Wednesday, the, uh, the theme of prayer is the Holy Spirit. And so as we gather, we pause, we remember we are in the presence of God and his spirit is with us as we pray. The spirit of the Lord fills the whole world. The spirit of the Lord moves over the deep. The spirit of the Lord warms our hearts. The spirit of the Lord fills all things. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord of life. Come, wind of heaven. Come, flame of love. Come, giver of gifts. Come, and fill us. On a Wednesday, the psalm is Psalm 139. The Spirit of God is in all the world. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvellously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. The Spirit of God is in all the world. And this morning we continue reading from the book of Deuteronomy and we've reached chapter 6. It's quite a long reading. Chapter 6 of Deuteronomy. These are the commands, decrees and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children and your children after them, may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear Israel and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. When the Lord your God brings you into the land he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob to give you, a land with large flourishing cities you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant, then when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Fear the Lord your God, serve him only and take your oaths in his name. Do not follow other gods, the gods of the peoples around you, for the Lord your God who is among you is a jealous God and his anger will burn against you and he will destroy you from the face of the land. Do not put the Lord your God to the test as you did at Massa. Be sure to keep the commands of the Lord your God and the stipulations and decrees he has given you. Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight, so that it may go well with you, and you may go in and take over the good land that the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors, thrusting out all your enemies before you, as the Lord said. In the future, when your son asks you what is the meaning of the stipulations, decrees and laws the Lord our God has commanded you, 
Tell him, we were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Before our eyes, the Lord sent signs and wonders, great and terrible, on Egypt and Pharaoh and his whole household. But he brought us out from there to bring us in and give us the land that he promised on oath to our ancestors. The Lord commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear the Lord our God, so that we might always prosper and be kept alive, as is the case today. And if we are careful to obey all this law before the Lord our God, as he has commanded us, that will be our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the reflections on the Bible readings this week are written by our own bishop, Bishop Michael, and he says this. If you walk through the old quarters of some European cities, you will sometimes come across a house with a small depression hollowed out towards the top of the doorpost. That is a sign that Jewish people once lived in that house. It marks the place where once there was Fick to Mezuzah, a small receptacle containing these verses from Deuteronomy that proclaim the unity of God and the command to love him. The Jewish family may have been obliterated, probably in the mass murder of the Holocaust, but there still remains this sign that this was once a place that housed the people of the God of Israel. Contemporary Jewish families continue to follow Deuteronomy's instructions. In a wonderfully compact poem called Mezuzah, the American poet Richard Chess calls this love nailed to the doorpost, a reminder of the place of God's law in the everyday business of the comings and goings of a family's life. That reminder is always intensely personal and it is always in the present tense. To fulfil the requirement of Jewish law, the parchment must be handwritten. No artificially printed copy can adequately express the individual commitment to the practising Jew. And the text must be written afresh every few years. Faith in God and love for God cannot be taken for granted, but is always in need of renewal. The mezuzah speaks of an everyday witness to the living God of Israel among his people. The space where a mezuzah was once placed is itself a silent witness to that same God. Even the horrors of the Holocaust cannot obliterate that witness. Deuteronomy 6 verse 9, write them on the doorposts of your house. The place of God's everyday law in the everyday business and the comings and goings of family life. I wonder how we remember those laws and guidance in our everyday comings and goings. And so we pray on all who are dispirited and dejected, on all who have lost hope or joy, on all who are unable to cope, on all who are weak and heavy burdened, on all who are fearful and anxious, on all who are lost or have strayed, on all who are powerless and helpless, Lord, have mercy. Holy Spirit, bringing order out of chaos, Holy Spirit, breathing life into the lifeless, Holy Spirit making strong the weak, Holy Spirit guiding all who venture, Holy Spirit filling all things, come renew the face of the earth. And a prayer written by the Corrymeela community of Northern Ireland for this time of pandemic. God of the Psalms of joy, God of the Psalms of sorrow, we note that part of being human is acknowledging the brokenness in the world and in ourselves and that part of being human is to love ourselves as you do, and to help you recreate from all these broken bits a new us and a new world. Amen. And so I invite you to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen. The strength of God guide us. The power of God preserve us. The wisdom of God instruct us. The spirit of God be within us today and evermore. So may God the Father bless us, may Christ the Son take care of us, and may the Holy Spirit enlighten us all the days of our life. Amen.
So thank you for joining me for prayer this morning. Do comment, let me know you're here. And uh, if you're able to join me again tomorrow at 9.45, it'd be lovely to see you. Take care. God bless. Bye for now.